Hello everybody, today we're doing a quick overview for the Canon T3i. Uh, it remains one of the most popular DSLRs on the market today. Um, a lot of people use it for its video capability. It does shoot in full 1080p at 30 frames per second, and it does look very good. That is one of the biggest selling points of the camera. It is an 18 megapixel camera with the CMOS sensor. It is a cropped sensor lens, so it's not the full frame uh, sensor on here. Uh, some other specs of it, uh, ISO from 100 to 6400, and you can set a limit if you're shooting things such as an aperture mode, shutter, priority mode. You can set a limit to how high the ISO will go. Uh, included, you get your pretty standard 18 by 55 uh, lens. It does have the built-in image stabilizer, obviously manual focus, autofocus uh, ability. It's the standard, again, f3.5 by 5.6 lens. Included with the package, you get your lens, a lens cap, uh, battery, charger, you get the AV cable, you get a USB cable. So everything that you need to get this camera running off to the start, it is included with the camera. Uh, the camera itself does have uh, the three inch screen here. It's a three inch LCD screen. And they also claim it's um, reflection reducing. And so not only will it not you know, reflect sunlight as well so you can see it easily, it also boasts that you can see it at different angles because one of the features of this camera is you can have it out like this and then you can point the uh, camera for you. For example, if we shoot it in live view, take the lens cap off. There we go. So again, you can see at like high or low angles, we kind of bend it. It works really well. And again, if you're like shooting up high, say if you're I'm a sports photographer, so like, you know, end of a game, big celebration, everyone hand-fiving or whatever, hand-fiving, whatever. But, uh, you know, you hold it up and you can't see it, but it's taking photos. But this you can see with the live view mode, so it does help. It is a convenience. Uh, my first camera I had is the Nikon D3100. It doesn't have that feature, but the D5100 does. So I didn't, you know, I, I figured I'd go with this because I figured I would never use that. I've realized how um, convenient that really is. So uh, the camera does take SD cards, as opposed to the expensive CF cards, which is pretty convenient. So you can see you need a card similar to this one. It has to be a class 10. Usually you'll see it with a little 10 in there. And a high uh, megabit per second um, card. In this case, I recommend 45 megabits per second card. That'll be more than enough for you. Because if you have lower, such as you know, 30 megabit per second or le even less than that, you're not going to be able to get that full quality HD video. And as we mentioned, it's 18 megapixels, technically 17.9. Uh, I don't remember this one off the top of my head, so it's 5184 by 3456. Um, so it is a very big picture. You can shoot it, it does do a JPEG format, and you can also shoot it in full RAW, so you have full control of everything uh, in Photoshop or Lightroom. Has the built in flash. Like almost all DSLRs, does have the uh, shoe thing here. Uh, so you can put on external things, in this case such as a mic, the standard, just slide it in there. And this camera, which is nice, as a DSLR, it also has the plug-in for external microphones. So if you wanted a boom mic like this, it works. Uh, so it obviously, usually these mics have much better quality audio sound than the built-in microphone on the cameras, because mainly they're not really meant to be video cameras. It's kind of an extra add-on in most cases. So you can add extra microphones for that. It also has a port for uh, shutter release, so you can use a shutter to manually do it. And then you have your HDMI and AV out as well, so you can view your camera screen on television screens or monitors or whatever have you. So that's pretty much it in terms of the technical specs of the T3i. Uh, here you can find a link, either red, maybe I'll make it green, blue, I don't know, we'll stick with red. Uh, red annotation uh, with the video quality. I kind of took this around town, took video. Uh, video is obviously one of the main things a lot of people buy this camera for. Uh, so you can see video I uploaded, um, various things, close up, far away, static shots of things not moving, and then action shots. I tested it with a football game I was covering. So I had to shoot some video of that as well. So there's a wide variety of testing footage. All right, so now we're gonna look at the actual menu, the shooting menu here. Here we have, uh, I'm shooting in manuals, what the screen looks like. Uh, so you use the switch on the top of the camera, that's how you can change the shutter speed. 
Um, then you can also change the aperture. As you can see, I'm using the uh, kit lens, so it's f3.5 all the way up to f22. And then for ISO settings, again, you can see auto, and then there's 100 through 6400. Now you have your typical white balance settings, uh, you have your standard uh, auto and then all of your other settings, sunny, cloudy, white tungsten, all that fun stuff, so typical white balance, and obviously you can set your own in the presets. And now we're going to look at the uh, settings menu, you can change the quality of the image, uh, obviously as your full large file, that's the full 18 megapixel, uh, then you can kind of go through, you can also shoot in the full large format and RAW, or just RAW if you choose to do so. Uh, change different settings will change the resolution, change the quality, and change uh, how much you can fit on a card. Um, then there's just all the other settings, the beeping sound when you're focused, uh, the image review time, how long you want for that. Exposure, exposure composition, custom white balance, I mentioned before, you can set your own in there. Uh, picture style, it allows you to choose your own custom um, way you shoot the picture, how it looks. Uh, so that way you don't have to do, you know, uh, shoot it in or edit it in Photoshop. For example, if you want to do black and white, I'm going to bring it up here, remove the lens cap, change the settings here. You can see I chose monochrome and I can, you know, do it in black and white if I chose to do so. This is the live view, what the live view looks like on the camera. Alright, so we have it uh, set to manual here, that's what the M4 in the shooting mode, kind of show you the uh, button presses here. Here's what your main uh, display screen looks like. Uh, up here on the top you have this uh, thing that rotates, that is how you change your shutter speed. And again it goes all the way to bulb, which is uh, you can use a remote for and set your own uh, time that you want. The max it does on its own is 30 seconds. And it goes all the way to one four thousand one four thousandth of a second, which is really fast. Um, if you hold this button down, let's see button uh, the AV button here. You can hold that down, and that's how you change your aperture. And the same thing, you just turn this. And I'm using the kit lens, so if I go all the way to fifty five here. Uh, we have it um, all the way up to f36 and we can go all the way down to 5.6 or if we have it set uh, all the way in it goes down all the way to f3.5 uh, for ISO uh, you're gonna hit this button up here ISO has its own button give it one press and it gives you the ISO options again auto through 6400 uh, I mean, well, the up arrow, that's the white balance button. Uh, you have your preview button, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, setting your uh, continuous shot, one shot, or timer mode, you can do here. You obviously, you have your single shot, continuous shooting. And then uh, you can choose continuous self-timer, which is a 10-second delay, and you can choose how many photos it takes. For example, I'll set it to 10 photos. I have it set to F4000. I'll just take a photo. It'll take 10 seconds here, and here you can just hear how fast you can take photos. There you go. Uh, obviously, I have it set to 4,000, so it's really dark. All the pictures are black. But um, that is uh, basically the button presses up here. Obviously, you have your menu button that'll take you through all of your settings. Uh, shooting settings and uh, other settings about the camera itself and if you're shooting and you want to turn the display off say it's at night time and it's bugging you you can just hit the display button up here and that will turn off the display or if you want to turn it back on it'll turn on the display finally we have the live view option you can hit live view and that is uh, how your picture will look we had it set to one four thousandth of a second here so here we go now you can see uh, what the picture will look like when you take one. Focus, take a picture. Here we're doing 10 second photos here, but uh, that's pretty much everything about the cam. Okay, so now we're in movie mode, and um, uh, this is kind of what a lot of people are interested in. Uh, here for movie exposure, uh, you can manually set how you want it in that terms of shutter speed, uh, aperture, ISO. You can manually set that or set to auto. I highly recommend manual. 
uh, for the autofocus mode, um, it just changes how um, you focus. Live mode, it just does it while the screen's open. Quick mode, it does it a lot quicker, but the screen blanks for a second. Um, and again, autofocus, uh, you can autofocus while you video just by holding down the button, uh, the shutter button, it will autofocus. Auto um, I don't know anything else. Video recordings, uh, you can change how you want it. Come on. So obviously you have the full, obviously you have your full 1080p, 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second. Or you can do that at 24 to save a little bit of space. You can also do it at 720p at 60 frames per second. That might be a better option for some of you that want to just do uh, high, you know, faster motion. And then you got your standard uh, 640 by 480. And then it also has the option for digital zoom. Uh, you have off and then three to ten times uh, digital zoom. I'm gonna put that on for now. So we're gonna go to the video. Zoom out here. Again, I apologize for the terrible video quality here. It was going to work so well. It was working so well. But uh, obviously, we're going to focus on my keyboard here. Um, with the focusing, obviously, it's just like normal camera. You can change your aperture, uh, your shutter speed. You can see it down here right now at 30. You can change it all at 4,000. Again, that does nothing in terms of better frame rate. It's just changing uh, how the video looks. And same thing with ISO, with the ISO button on the top, and you can choose however ISO you want. Obviously, just with picture quality, higher ISO means a little bit noisier uh, video footage. Uh, and then we mentioned um, you have the option uh, to put on one of these mics, an external microphone on your cameras, which you can do. Uh, as we mentioned, you have the uh, microphone port on the side of the camera. So as we go to the menu options, we can now go to sound recording. And here you can change it. Um, whenever you plug in a microphone, it will automatically mute the onboard um, microphone. So you don't have to actually choose to use this microphone. It does it automatically. Uh, then here you can choose it uh, manual or auto or just disable audio entirely. So for manual, you can choose um, the, uh, the measurement levels. If you want to reduce some of the background noise, you can turn it down. If you want to amplify everything around you, you can turn it up. So if we turn this up all the way, it's going to be pretty sensitive. You can see just background noise. That is my computer probably picking up the, uh, the fans. But if you want to turn it down, you just want to turn it down until the ambient noise is not existent. A little bit more, a little bit less, whatever, good enough. But uh, it does have full control over audio, and you're likely going to have to do some kind of post-processing in terms of uh, the audio. Uh, there might be some like white noise you might have to get rid of. Again, and then with digital zoom, just like as it says, you can zoom in. So let's look back at the keyboard, for example. Uh, defaults at 3. If you hold down the display button, which is... Uh, up here this is also what turns off your display. Um, you can hold that while in video mode and then use the plus or minus button to get that extra zoom. That's again all digital zoom. Like so. So that pretty much covers the camera itself. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much it for the Canon T through I. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. You can leave a comment uh, below or send me a message. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, check out some of my other videos. I've got a quite a wide variety of random videos you might be interested in. So check them out. Uh, feel free to subscribe, and thanks for watching.